triumphal Mozart, songful Bruch, and Mendelssohn's Scottish sounds are the focus of this CSO program. Felix Mendelssohn's tour of Scotland inspired some of his greatest music, as vividly demonstrated in the Hebrides Overture. Mendelssohn was a dashing young man of 20 when he sailed to the Isle of Staffa, one of the Hebrides off the west coast of Scotland. During his visit, he took a boat ride to Fingal's Cave, a spectacular cavern known for its basalt rock formations. Mendelssohn became dreadfully seasick during the journey, but nonetheless raved about the island in a letter to his sister Fanny. The following came to my mind there, he wrote, jotting down the rippling theme that opens the piece and which beautifully suggests the murmur of wind and waves. The legendary violinist Josef Joachim declared that Max Bruch's first violin concerto was the richest, the most seductive concerto he'd ever played. That says a lot coming from a virtuoso who also championed concertos by Brahms, Beethoven, and Mendelssohn. Bruch wrote much of the concerto while serving as court music director at Koblenz. He dedicated it to Joachim after the virtuoso supplied feedback and premiered the final version in 1868. Brooks' concerto became an instant hit with its shimmering, languorous melodies, ecstatic climaxes, and a finale built on a rollicking dance tune. CSO concertmaster Robert Chen is the soloist. Finally, Mozart's Symphony No. 41 was the last of three symphonies he wrote in Vienna in the summer of 1788. It was an amazingly productive time, but hardly trouble-free. Mozart's finances had taken a dire turn. A wealthy merchant named Michael Puchberg agreed to several loans after the composer wrote him a series of increasingly desperate letters pleading for assistance. Still, the symphony, aptly named Jupiter, suggests that Mozart couldn't have been happier. The triumphal score is set in a ceremonial key of C major and contains hints of comic opera, trumpet and drum flourishes, and finally, a grand five-voice fugue.